So the message of today is convert your time into a treasure called solitude. You remember how we started this whole journey? This whole journey is about people who, who have lost their job or this is about people who don't have work. And the question is, what should people do when they have lost their job? Because there is no salary, there is no money to bring to the house, there is no money to feed their children with. So what should people do if they have lost their salary, if they have lost their income or their job? And I, I'm trying to say, you know, when, you've lo when you lose your job, that is one of the greatest things that could ever happen to you. And that thing is the fact that, thank God at last, you are face to face with the greatest resource that is out there. You are face to face with the greatest wealth that is out there. And that greatest wealth that is out there is the wealth of time. That is nothing more precious than the wealth of time. If you could realize that everything is made out of time, everything is made out of time. So if, if you will be able to convert your free time into anything you want, if you know what the treasure of time, if you know that time is a resource, you'll actually be able to convert your time to any product you want. You'll be able to convert your time to anything. So time could be converted to anything. You know, it is, it is from time that everything is made. So one of the things that you could do with your time is to convert your time to a treasure, to a greater treasure. And that treasure is solitude. Solitude is a greater treasure than money. Solitude is a greater treasure than wealth. Solitude is a greater treasure of, you know, solitude is the, is the, is the means through which you could use your, you could, you know, concentrate in using your time. You could concentrate to converting your time into something of value. So solitude is a time, is, 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 is a time when uh, you are actually doing something with your time. So when you, when it's, it's, it's a form of overcoming distraction. It is a form of overcoming distraction. And when you overcome distraction, you'll be able to do something more specifically, something more precise, something more definite with the time that you have. So it's the time, the, the gift of uh, the, uh, the, the time of solitude is one of the greatest treasures you could ever think about. It's a wonderful, wonderful treasure. Nothing, let me tell you something about uh, solitude. Do you know that really nothing is born? Nothing is born. Nothing could be given birth to without solitude. That you can really never give birth to anything in this world without solitude. Anything precious comes out of solitude. In life, everything precious. Like, let's look at children. How did we bring children to life? How do we bring? How do we bring? How do we give birth to our children? You know, children are simply a result of solitude. It's true because before you could give birth to children, you must be able to find. Uh, a place where a man and a woman could be isolated. And the solitude means isolation. So for you to be able to give birth to a child, two people must be isolated together. And, and, and that is when intimacy happens. So real intimacy is a product of solitude. And it is that intimacy that eventually gives birth to children. So children or pregnancy, pregnancy and children are a result of solitude. So when men and women come together, that solitude produces a fruit. A, yeah, a fruit. So there is always fruit coming out of solitude. So that's why it's a treasure. The solitude is is a wonderful treasure. No treasure like solitude. So what I'm trying to say is that solitude will always, a time of solitude will always produce some fruits. A time of solitude will always produce some results. Why? Because solitude time is a time, is an opportunity 
to actually make time work for you. It's an opportunity to actually convert time to something. Solitude time is an opportunity, is a, is a place where you actually turn your time into some treasure. It's, a, it's, it's an opportunity for you to convert time into some form of treasure. So one of the greatest discoveries you could actually discover in life is the, the treasure of solitude. You, because, listen closely, life is about conversion. Life is all about conversion. Life is about conversion. Conversion of what? <clears throat> conversion of time. Everything comes out of time. And it is your ability to take your time and convert it to something. That is what produces, that what decides if you are going to have time and if you are going to have a product or not. Let me give you another example of the conversion of con about the fact that I want to prove to you that life is about conversion and conversion of time. Everything comes out of time. Okay, let's say, you. I'm sure many of you will be going to work today. Many of you will be going to work today, right? Okay. When you go to work today, when you go to your work today, you'll probably be riding a car or you'll be riding a bus. Let's say you are riding a bus. In the process of you riding that bus, while you are sitting, let's say you traveling to your work to and fro two hours. So you go there one hour, you come back one another one hour. So you spend two hours just going to work. Now, while you are sitting in that bus or you are sitting in the tube or in the metro or in the, any transport that you take, somebody is sitting down there and just looking around, looking at people, what, who wears what, and just, you know, all kind of thoughts in his mind. Or he's just looking in the street, looking at the weather, looking at trees, at buildings, and just looking around. So one hour passes, he just looks around, nothing happened. Then he comes back also, just looking at people, just thinking, lost in his thoughts, just, you know, nothing. You know, just killed two hours. So what has he just done? He had just wasted life. Two hours of his life had just been thrown away. Now, that same two hours, that same two hours, so another person is sitting in that same bus with a book. And he reads one hour when he's going. He reads another one hour. What has he done? It's like nothing has happened. Just going to work. Two people going to work. One looking around and one converting time. You, that same period of time, one hour, is using it to add value into himself. And that same one now, two hours that has passed, in two hours, he has finished reading a book. And in two hours, he has just added weight, value to himself. Because he, even in the bus, he was able to, 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 to isolate himself and use isolation to convert that time. The time that could have been wasted. The time that could have just passed. He was able to convert that time into added value for himself. Another person traveling in the same bus two hours to another person traveling the same bus two hours to and fro is typing. Just two hours. He's not even looking around, he's not seeing anybody. Same two hours, somebody looking around, just thinking, condemning people, thinking other, and another person just typing. In two hours, in one hour, he has written a one chapter. Another one hour, he has written another chapter. He has written another chapter. So just by going to work, one hour, one chapter, two, 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 one, coming back, one, two chapters. So he has written maybe one chapter or two chapters just by traveling. By the time he does that for a week, he has written a whole book. Or by the time he does that for a month, he has written a book.
So what has happened? It's like, there was no time. I was, we were all busy. This guy was busy traveling, using his, traveling the bus to work. It's like, traveling the bus. He's, what am I supposed to do? Just traveling. But that same time, is a time factor. Either you are converting time into a product or into a value chain, or you are killing, wasting, throwing away your life. Remember our illustration? I'm going to give this illustration every day. You remember this is life. This is your, this is your body. The, 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 the jar is your body. But your body is carrying your life inside. This is your life. Every day, you like it or not, your life is pouring out. Like it or not, every day, your life is pouring out. Every second, your life is pouring out. It doesn't matter. Either you convert that life that is coming. Either you convert it to something or you don't convert it to something. It's your problem. But the life keeps on going out. It's going out of you. The lives keep on going out of you. So when you go to your work, what you do is that you go for, to, to, for your work for eight hours and you pour your life, eight hours of your life, you pour it out to that work. That is what gives you salary. So salary, therefore, is only, let me tell you what is salary. Sal the meaning of salary is this. Salary is the compensation you get for giving out or for selling out an, an amount of your life. Salary, the, the day salary, if you the hour by hour you are paid in your country, eight hours of, the, of, uh, of a daily work is you get eight hours compensation for the life. It is your life. Your life is disappearing. You gave one month of your life, you are left with only this much, and you are compensated a little bit for that your life. So you are selling out your life. For, you, I, I, what do you mean selling out your life? Through time. You sold your time. You are exchanging your time for money. That is what salary is. Salary is what you get when you give out your life. To use your life to work. When you give us your time. So why do they pay you time by time? Hourly or monthly or yearly or weekly? Because your life is in time. When you dedicate one month of your life, one month of your time into a job, you get a salary for one month. When you dedicate one week of your life for a job, you get one week salary. When you dedicate one day of your life you pour out. You are not just dedicating. You are pouring out. You are actually pouring out your life. One month of your life, one week, one day of your life, you are giving it out. Your life is going, disappearing. But at least you get compensated. That is what we call spending time. At least you get some compensation. You sold out your time. You mortgage your life. At least you mortgage something. You get something for it. But when you are just riding a, a true life, like in that bus, and you're just looking around and analyzing people. Uh, what did that one wear? <laughs> what kind of hairstyle is that one wear? Okay. Uh, oh, these people sell. Uh, you're, just, you're just riding through life and you are not converting that time. So what happens when you go to work and get salary is that you are giving your time, your life out, and you, you, you are being compensated by salary. So you are converting your time into salary. Which is sheep, which is which is nothing. You are actually losing your life. You are giving it out. But when you invest your life into yourself, when you are riding that bus and reading books, you are not pouring it out somewhere for some job or for some salary. You are reinvesting it into yourself. You are multiplying the quality of your life when you add value to yourself. Or when you convert that time into writing a book, you are multiplying your content, yourself, your life is being multiplied. Or when you take that time and you conserve it through solitude and you go somewhere and you go and think and use time, you take time. 
You are you taking time to think. You are taking time to study. You are taking time to work on in the library. Or you are taking time to work in the laboratory to convert. You are using that time. You are taking advantage of every minute. And you are converting it to a product. You are producing something every minute. So everything comes from time. That's what I'm trying to say. That time that those, those two people were using to write to, to their work, that time could be converted. And somebody just wasted it and said, oh, I'm just writing to, to work by bus. But somebody converted it into reading books. And that time, it won the time back. So you could actually wrangle the time back from just... They, they, you know, from flying away because time flies away. So instead of you to allow it to fly away, you could wrangle it back and use it productively. So the person that was reading the book took advantage of his time and wrangled it back from, from vanity and took it and turned it to added value into himself, made himself a better person. The person that, that, uh, that was writing a book writing one chapter at the other, when, when he's driving, when he's riding to work, he's taking advantage. He's not allowing his life just to be poured out. He's not allowing his life just to be poured out. He's taking advantage of that life and converting it into another product. That is how life must be lived. You must always live in the here and now, in con active consciousness. And what active consciousness means is that you are always asking yourself the question, what am I doing with my time right now? Am I using this time the best way? Am I converting it into what am I converting this time right now? Am I converting it into added value to myself? Am I converting it into added value to others? Am I converting the time into added value into a product, into producing a product or a service? So Every, every time of your life, every second, must be that the target of life and the, the, the idea of life is that every time must be converted into something. So, but solitude, solitude makes this almost automatic. If you have an idea of what you want to do in your solitude, you know, is solitude is actually taking the bull by the horns. Solitude is an ab ab ability, an opportunity to take the bull by the horn and just... So, through solitude, you are actually blocking the way of that time that is flying away, that is going. You are standing on the way, and you are taking the bull by the horns, and you are saying, no, I am not going to allow my life and my time just to wind away and fly away like that. I am going to be battling with this, with this, with this, uh, with this, with this bull, and I'm going to be converting it. So, whatever your decision is and whatever you decide to do in that solitude is what you are converting that time into. So, for example, when uh, Michelangelo, Michelangelo, the great, uh, the great, uh, the great artist, uh, yeah, painter, when he goes into his studio, painting studio, he starts to work on his project, he remains in solitude in that studio for two months, for three months, for six months, just painting. What is he doing? He doesn't want, he didn't want to lose any time. He didn't want to give room for distraction. He's taking advantage of time. He's taking the time, the bull of time by the horns and he's converting that time into the product that he wants to see. So that is why he's one of the greatest artists right now. Salvador, Sal, 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 Salvador Dali, all those great names we know, they go into a time of solitude and they sit there in solitude for six months, sometimes one year, two years, three years in solitude. In fact, when I got to uh, uh, St. Bas Basilica in, 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 in Rome and in, in, in Vatican, I heard that some of these great people, they were in that St. Basilica for three years, four years, six years. In solitude, they just bring them food to eat and they go to the restroom. They remain in solitude for six years, seven years, but not just in solitude, you know, meditating or just wasting away life again or wasting away time. They are fulfilling destiny. 
They are in solitude producing, converting time into a product. Solitude is a purposeful and intentional time. When you put yourself away along with time and with the with the properties that you need to convert that time into the product that you want it to what you want it to be. So it's solitude is a time when you go into 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 a determined time of making the best of that time. You are converting that time. You are in solitude with the sole purpose. For example, if I'm a pastor, I go to solitude to be alone with God. Why? So that I could Con that time that I'm alone with God, let's say two weeks or one week, so that that time of alone with God, I am looking at God. I'm beholding God maximum amount of time, 10 hours, 14 hours, 18 hours a day in the presence of God, talking to God, conversing with God, learning about God, hearing about God, reading about God. What am I doing? I am beholding Him. And the longer I behold Him, the more I am changed to his image. Because we behold him as he is. And the more we behold him, the, his glory that we are beholding, it changes us into his image. So, I, I, my, while my body is dying because I'm not eating and I'm not, you know, you know, doing all the things that I normally do, but I have isolated myself from food, from different things, and I just concentrate Myself in changing my nature, in making the nature of God. So I'm converting my time, that time, that 24 hours, I'm converting it from just vanity and frivolity, frivolity and frivolousness. I'm converting it into beholding God. I'm concentrating it, investing it into God and downloading God into my nature. Downloading the nature of God and allowing His glory to change my, my, my mortal body, my, my, my perspective, my understanding. I'm studying some characteristics of God. I'm studying the nature of God. I'm studying some of His values, some of His character, some of His reactions, some of His attitude in different situations. I am allowing myself to learn and bring the nature of God into my nature. Because that's why the Bible says that we have been given these great and precious promises so that through them, through the great and precious promises, we could have the nature of God. We could be partaker, partaker of the nature of God. The same thing happens. So when you listen to this, my teaching, or this teach, you know, this any subject you want, and you go and spend time with that word and you are letting the word sink down into you, you are making yourself to be partaker of that word. You are making that word to become flesh in you. The longer you can spend time on that word, the longer time you can meditate on that word, the longer time you could think on that word, you could pray over that word, you could pray over, meditate and see and meditate and see the, that word, the more you making that word become part of your nature. And the more you make the nature of God, the word of God become part of your nature, the more God's nature begins to take a hold of you. So that is what it is with me as a pastor, for example. But other times, and I have another, 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 another mission. Let's say I have a mission, for example, of you know writing books. So I could go to that solitude, and before I come, out, for example, when I have vacation, I cannot understand how people could have vacation and just go and. Just be lucky, you know, just be playing around, especially white people in Europe here. White people just go on vacation, they just go and lie down in the sun and say they are tanning. And they just go and lie down and just waste time. Two hours lying down, three hours lying down in the sun, four hours lying down, the whole day lying down, two weeks lying down. The problem is not with lying down, no problem with lying down. But how can you go and lie down your life? I mean, that is vacation. It's the best time for you to be productive because you are not being distracted by work. You are not spending your life away. You are not spending your life away in doing your selling it out in work or for a job. But now you are just pouring it out for nothing. It's not for nothing. It's the vacation time. It's the best time to do solitude. Because during that vacation time, you could take that two weeks of a or one week or how many days you have and just you know, solid, you know, no, no, uh, and just isolate yourself. And when you isolate yourself, you could just begin to convert 
that time of vacation into any product you want. If you want to do invention, for example, you go and do the research. You go and put the research materials together. And you use that time to study it, to, to do your experiments, and to convert that time into the product that you want. If I want to write a book, I go and, for example, vacation time for me, I never ever go to vacation either without write, coming back to write two books, I mean, with two books written, when I, or three books written when I go on vacation. Vacation time is the greatest time to convert that time into product. Every day of your life, every minute of your life should be converted into some product. So, solitude allows you without any distraction, because when you are in the bus, it is one thing to be converting. You need more concentration. You need a higher level of concentration in the bus to be able to read and not to be distracted. You need higher level of concentration to be able to write and not be distracted. So, but when you have solitude, solitude time is a precious time. You alone, you alone, you alone with yourself, with God, and with Whatever product, whatever you want to make, you bring together the substance or, or that you want to convert into a product, and then you go and do that. So, so that's why I say, you no, know, the solitude is a treasure. Solitude is a treasure. The solitude time is a is a treasure time. So you should actually be fighting to have a time of solitude. Like I said, everything precious comes out of solitude. For example, if I have this my book. This book that you are saying, I was everything. There is no human being that can write a book without being solitude, without being lonely, without having solitude. Because the, the act of writing book itself is for you to be alone with your thought and be able to transfer your thought into a substance, into something. So a book is a result of solitude. Because when you go into solitude, solitude always gives birth to something. Just like it is solitude that gives birth to pregnancy. Just like every pregnancy is as a result of solitude. Just like every child that is born is as a result of solitude. Because without man and woman being alone, without man and woman being you know, isolated, without them being in solitude, no child is given birth to. That is why, you know, intimacy is a form of solitude. So solitude always gives birth to a product. Solitude always gives birth to a seed. So solitude is what gave birth to this. This iPad that you are seeing here is as a result of solitude. Nobody can come up with the idea of the iPad without thinking, being alone with his thought and putting it down. So that is what happened. So during the time of solitude, you are able to take advantage of time. You are able to be alone with time and convert that time. Not just wind away time. Not just cause time to go and just pass by you. You are turning time into a product. You are converting time into something. So when you are going to solitude, be determined for yourself what you want to go and do there. Go and you know, find out what you want to do. You know, a Time of solitude could be used for different things. Time of solitude could be used to be a time of producing something, of giving birth to ideas, of giving birth to a product. It could be a time of giving birth to the nature of God in yourself. It could be a time of, you know, enriching yourself, of, of, of adding value to yourself. It could be a time of, you know, making yourself bigger. It could be a time of solitude. It could be a time of releasing the value, I mean, the virtue that is already in you or some wealth that is already in you, turning them into some product or service. So it could be a time of research. It could be a time, I mean, can you believe it? I was listening just last week to Bill Gates. And Bill Gates says, this is one thing he cannot, from when he was a young man, is one thing he cannot miss. It takes two weeks every year just to be alone in solitude, no human being. And that's what made him be Bill Gates. Because he needs new ideas. He's not even a believer. He doesn't even believe in God. But this is a law that works for you anyhow. It's a law of conversion. Conversion of time. The greatest wealth in the world is time. The, that is the greatest wealth. So he is converting time into a product that later gives him money. Therefore, money is made out of time. Money is a byproduct of time. Money is only time that is well converted. 
So money is the raw materials. I mean, sorry, time is the raw materials from which money is made. Time is the raw materials from which products are made. Time is the raw materials from which everything comes. But only when that time is converted Bach, Sebastian Bach, yeah? the great musician, composer. I mean, he, comp he had solitude all from the age of nine. He had so much materials converted that by the time, he, they, he, when he was dead, they found his work. They hired a secretary to just write and copy, just copy what he has done. It took 70 something years to be able to copy what he has been able to produce. Solitude makes you productive like crazy. He was converting every minute of his life. He only lived so be, you know, he didn't even live up to the amount of time that was needed to convert his work. People were working full time to rewrite his work. It took them 70 years to, to convert. I mean, to just rewrite. And what about him that he created that time? Because he was using every minute. He was converting every minute. So when people ask me, how come I've written 300 books? Because it's about taking advantage of that. Being able to take your bull by the horn and converting the time, realizing that time is the product, is the wealth from which everything comes. It's the wealth through which money comes. It is the wealth through which everything comes. So when you understand the value of time and the wealth of time, the resource of time, you will be running away from the crowd. You will be running away from distraction. You will be running away from television. You will be running away from movies. You will be running away from all kinds of distractions. Because you are conscious that you need to convert that time, that minute, that second. You need to convert it. And if you really understand the treasure and the wealth of time, you will be rejoicing that they have fired you from your work. Because instead of you pouring out your life, and giving out your, your life and exchanging it for a porridge and just selling it out, selling out your life bit by bit until you are old and empty and you become so old. See, you are full before. Your life, you are full of energy, you are full of grace, full of life. Now you have always reduced, you are emptied. Instead of you emptying your life in exchange for just some, some coins and some pennies, you could actually right now take charge of that your time. And be the one deciding that you are not going to pour it out. You are not going to waste it. You are not going to spend it. You are going to be conserving it. You are going to be converting it. You are going to be multiplying, duplicating, reproducing your life, duplicating it, multiplying it. On your, and you are going to populate the earth by yourself, by the product that you have multiplied and you're producing yourself. So if you have the power of solitude, you could actually take up your you know take a decision to invent anything you know like i said the other time if you will invest ten thousand hours this is being proved proven scientifically if you will invest ten thousand hours into discovering anything ten thousand hours into you know studying and adding value to yourself into anything if you invest ten thousand hours of solitude of just time you know, practicing the thing and use, you know, practice and working on something, 10,000 hours will make you one of the best in the world. Anybody that dedicates 10,000 hours into doing anything becomes the best in it in the world. Like I said, the Olymp, the, 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 the Singapore guy that overcame and, you know, did and beat his idol, Michael Phelps, he, he you know, he, he, he only spent seven years, uh, eight years, you know, to, you no, know, to to uh, rehearsing or you know swimming, practicing. You know, he did it three hours a day. Since uh, when you time you practice six, three to four hours a day, you know, uh, to, let's let's say three to six hours a day. By the time you practice anything, you devote it to anything. In the next five years, in the next five to six years, you will be become the best, one of the best in the whole world. Why? Because the world doesn't concentrate. The world doesn't know how to work concentrate intendedly. The world doesn't, you know, most of the people in the world are just distracted, they're just on the surface. But if you will be deep enough to concentrate, take 10,000 hours, divide it by, by how many hours you can, you can devote to it in a day, you know, to doing one single thing. 
Because it is time that produces wealth. It is time that produces product. It is time that produces everything we see. So divide it, you will find out how much hours you have. But if you go pro, you know, dedicate six hours or five hours or you know, eight hours just to one thing, researching one thing or developing your own thing or practicing one thing or perfecting your art in one thing, you will be the best in that thing. And the, one, the best way to do that is through, through isolation, is through solitude. So let me quickly give you some of the advantages of solitude. And if you have time, maybe you might want to uh, read this or you might want to write this down. And I'm going to give you point by point the advantages of solitude, okay? Point by point. Number one benefit of solitude. Number one benefit of solitude is that solitude makes you to begin to see life the way it is. Because without solitude, you know what is the picture of our lives? Our life is a picture of being overwhelmed by all kind of things going on in our lives. So our life is a picture of what we ought to do, what we know we need to do, what we are planning to do, what we want to do. We are overwhelmed with what we want to do, what we ought to do, what we need to do, what we are avoiding to do, what we are praying to do, what we are hoping to happen, and but no really time to really get down and get this thing together and separated and really get it. But when you have solitude, you are able to sit down and be alone with yourself and God and be able to plan, okay, what is it that I want to do? What is it God wants me to do? How am I hot to do it? When do I need to do it? Do I need to do it at all? What is it I don't even need to do? What should I avoid doing? What is it that I cannot... Avoid doing. Solitude is converting your time into a time, into a product of self-analysis. Converting your time into clarity. Conv so solitude gives you opportunity to bring your life into order. To bring clarity into your life. That's number one. Another thing solitude does for you is that solitude allows you to just clear your mind. Because sometimes we are all mentally overwhelmed sometimes. We are overwhelmed emotionally. We are overwhelmed by what is happening around us. We are overwhelmed with all kind of information coming left, right and center. We are overwhelmed with just gathering too much information and not knowing what to do with them. We are overwhelmed by too much things that we are planning to do. We never really get time to do them. We are, you know, we have so much going on that we don't even have time to sit and organize those things. Our mind is just a messed up system. But our mind is supposed to be a planned, well planned out system. Our goals and objectives are supposed to be well planned out system. Well, so solitude avoids, uh, affords you the time to build a system for yourself. To just go and sit down and build a system, work out a system that works for you. So you slow down, you remove yourself from all the vanities of life, from all the distractions, from all the things going on. And just sit down and build a system. If you need to invent something, solitude affords you that time to go and sit down and build that system. To come up with a formula. To be able to build an algorithm. If you need to invent something, the same thing. Solitude allows you to be able to come up with the right formula that works for you. And build the right system that will make things to work for you. And once you put your life in the system, the system works for itself. The system just goes on automatically. Next thing that solitude will do for you, solitude helps you to put your values in place. Because, you know, 
Everything is pushing us left and right. Everything is just overwhelming us. But a time of solitude will make you to come to touch with your value system. It will help you to come to touch with the things that really matter in life, with your priorities. And you'll be able to say, okay, no, no, I'm being distracted now. I don't want this value. This is not my value system. This is not my value. I want to see life in the right perception. You are able to line up your life with God's understanding for you, with God's plan for you. You are able to find out where you are missing it, where you are going astray. What you are doing that is not in line with the original thought and the original mandate that you had upon your life. You are able to find out your mission, your calling, your destiny. And be able to arrange your life only around your destiny. Only around your calling. Only around your purpose. And of course, next one. If you have not discovered your calling. If you have not discovered your purpose. You could just take all those teachings I did. They are on my video blog on sundayadilajablog.com. You just take and go and use that time to invest and discover who you are. What you are supposed to do in life. Those teachings are already there. Or if you are in a financial mess, I have a whole series on financial freedom and the loss of money. You could also go to sundayadilajablog.com and go to the playlist and go and get all those teachings on finances and just listen to all the 51 of them and just put your life in order and make, begin to make money work for you. So anything you see that you are not in order, wherever you are not in order in your life, or anything that is going out of order, let's say you are having fan, you know, f uh, family problem or family issues or relationship issue, then you could just go and take books on relationship you could, or teachings on relationship and just be alone and convert that time to producing another product and that product will be a better relationship, successful relationship. So you just go and invest your life I mean, you know, convert your time into producing the kind of relationship that you want, the kind of family that you want. You go and convert your time into producing the kind of result, the kind of thing that you want in your life. Let's say it's money that you don't have or money that you don't know how to manage. You just go and take your time, be in solitude, convert that time of solitude into bringing the new product into your life, the product of order in finances, the product of knowledge, skills on how to deal with finances. So when you go and isolate yourself with the, you know, with the topic, whatever topic that you, is bothering you, whatever thing that you want to better or improve in your life, take all the materials that are needed, go and be alone with God, with yourself and with the materials, study them, convert, use those uh, instruments, those materials, those teachings to be the instrument of conversion. Convert that time that you are spending in that solitude into the product of an improved relationship with your husband, an improved relationship with your children, an improved relationship with your spouse, an improved relationship with in your finances. You know, I, you know, just because you need, sometimes we all need that time to stop and just, you know, take only one topic, take just one topic and, you know, be, you know, challenging, take that time and take that time and convert it, convert the time, convert it. And through those things, that studying that topic, engaging that topic, dwelling on that topic, you are converting that topic into a product in yourself that will make you to have a new understanding, to be an expert, to be so good in that thing that it, you, know, you, you, are, you become a master over that situation. That's what, what, what solitude does for you. And it is the same thing if you want to invent a new thing or you want to research a new thing. That is what Thomas Edison would do. Can you imagine Thomas Edison would go into the office and we, <laughs> they would come and break the door also for him on Friday because he has gone there on Monday or Tuesday and he's not, people are saying, you have not eaten. And he doesn't even remember that it's Friday already. He thinks it's just the next day. And they break the door to get him out because he's so you know, so, so, so concentrated, so focused in getting the, you know, doing research in solitude, converting that time into the product that he wants to create. So that, that is the kind of thing that happens to us when, when we, when we find time for solitude. So, you know, if we are, can you imagine many people that are working today because they are working, they can never find time for solitude. And that is why being fired is one of the greatest things that could happen to you. Because if you are fired, then you know that, you know, you have all the time. 
you become the master of your life. You become the master of the greatest wealth that is possible. But when you are working and you are going to work and you are on job, you know, you are selling out your time. You are selling out your life. You cannot, you are no more the owner of your life. You are no more the owner of your time. You are, you have contracted your life out. You have contracted your time out. Anybody that your time now is being given out, you know, you have contracted your life out. You have contracted your time out. You are sold out. You are lost. And you will never be able to take a, a hold of it and be the master of that time and do it, use that time to convert it to anything that you want. Not you just use it to do what people want. Not use it to do what your job description wants. Not using your life or your time to do what people tell you to do. But using your time and your, you know, your, your life to actually reproduce yourself. Multiply yourself. Bring out fruits and, and, and results that you desire to have. That's one of the greatest things you could discover in your life. Another thing that you could do in your time of solitude is to rebuild your life. To rebuild your ideal life. It's because when you are in solitude, you can, be, you can do an inventory of yourself. Uh, then do a study of the most successful people in life or the people that are in your line of calling, in your field of, 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 of calling, of destiny. And you could see what made them who they are. What are the qualities that these people have that I don't have? Then write them down. Write the ones that you have down. Write the qualities that you don't have down. You know, make a list of them and, you know, do a study of how to get those things that you don't have now. Put them down. Study them, you know, you know and... You know, by converting, by meditating, and by praying, and by being in solitude, you could actually, you know, you know, bring those values that you don't have, those value systems, those virtues that you are not in you, that are not that, that 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 is not making you to become the best person you could become in life. Bring those qualities and be in solitude and just work on them. Use that time of solitude to convert and to make those qualities and those virtues to become your own. Through meditation, through praying, through thinking, through studying, through making those qualities become flesh in you. And when they become flesh in you, you become a new man. You, are, you come out of that place a new individual, a new person altogether. And you become, you'll be commanding a new authority. You'll be commanding a new power. You'll be, you will, you will have, and then you could also use that same tool to get rid of the things that are setting you back. The things that are not the best qualities that you have. The things that are weak, that are the weaknesses that you have. The qualities that are not, you know, proper, they are not advancing you. They are not propelling you forward they are not making you to be the best of yourself you need to you know use to so little time to uproot them from yourself from your life and to get rid of them and then put in the new qualities that would make you the best that you could be anywhere when you have the power of time and you can take possession of your time there's nothing that you cannot become you can become anything that you want to be and but the goal is for you to become your best self because, you know, we are not our, most of us are not our best self. So, you know, people always get surprised when they find out where I'm coming from. And it's, you are coming from that village, you never ask who, how did you become who you became? I made myself. I made myself who I want to be. I sat down. I, I did analysis. I did an inventory of myself. I saw the things that I didn't have. I always did that. You know, what are the things that I lack? I see, look for other people. I see the things that they have. I write them down. I study. I find ways to bring those things, import those things to myself. I build myself into the kind of person that I want to be. I created my new, you know, before I used to be silent and shy, I created a new personality out of myself that is not shy, that is not limited, that is not, you know, that is not, you know, intimidated. I built, built I, I discovered that I was not bold. I built bold in my character through solitude through building it making that world become flesh myself reading the skills discovering the skills that make me like that i was old, always holding back i released myself to be a, an upstart a proactive person i created that value in myself i was always afraid of smiling in public or something but i created myself to be lively because i knew that the live, lively people are more interested and they always get things done isn't so i created myself but normally i i would not like to be alone also i hated solitude i really to be alone 
you know, because I was not finding it interesting for me to be alone with myself. But because I discovered the value of solitude, I forced myself, I created the habit of being alone and being solitary because I knew that I need it. I need it. So I created that quality and that virtue in myself. So you can actually remodel yourself, remold yourself. The, one of the goals, one of the most important things you could ever do in life is to create the best of yourself, to create your ideal self. Because what you are seeing now, what you are assuming that that is you. What you are seeing now, you think that is yourself, that is your idea, that's who I am. No, that's not who you are. Can you imagine that if you had been born the, you, the same with, from the same parents, but you have been born and given birth to, for example, in another country. Let's say you are living right now in, in England, but you are go, b giving birth to in America. And, you know, and we, you know, you'll be speaking another language. You'll be speaking another accent. And because of the environment and because of the schools and because of the people you meet, your character will be different. Your attitude will be different. Your, you know, your reactions will be different. Even though you are your name is still the same. Even though you are coming from the same parents. Or let's say you are born in South Africa. But you still having, you know, the same parents. Let's say African, Nigerian parents. Or you are having, you know, European parents. But because you are born there, the people you are exposed to, the language they speak, the values you are taught, they make who you are. So we are all products of accidents. We are all products of failures of the people who raised us up, the failures of people, the lack of understanding that of the people who, who, who raised us up, the, their understanding and lack of understanding, their wisdom and lack of wisdom, their weaknesses and their strength. You know, we are just a whole bunch of accidental people, accidental uh, incidences and things like that. But instead of you to just be at the mercy of whatever they have made you into, what your school has made you into, what your country has made you into, what your parents have made you into, instead of you to just remain, remain that accidental self don't just keep your accidental self you know take your time and say okay i am going to change my accidental self into my best self into my ideal self and that could be done through solitude so it's not just products you could pro you could produce in solitude but you could turn the time of solitude to also producing yourself and once you have produced yourself, then you'll be able to produce new siblings or new, new, new fruits uh, and seeds that are after you, that are just after your nature, that, you know, after your new nature. Another thing that solitude will do for you is that solitude, you could use time of solitude to get rid of worries, to get rid of anxieties. To get rid of, you know, just to come to the peace of God and to come into the rest of God. You could enter the rest of Christ because Christ is our rest. So a time of solitude is a time of getting rid of all the junks, getting rid of all the worries, getting rid of all the fears. You can actually be in a solitude with an assignment to get rid of all fear, never to fear again. So you go and take all materials that talk about fear. You go and take all messages that talk about faith, belief in yourself, faith in yourself, fear, and things like that. You listen to them. You work out, you know, how to get rid of them. You work it out before you come out of that solitude. So that by the time you come out of that solitude, nobody can recognize you again. From a, your timid self, fearful self, into somebody that is just violently bold. You know, sometimes when people listen to me, they say, we cannot understand where your boldness is coming from. That you are so bold, it's intimidating. That you are so bold that it's almost at the verge of arrogance. Well, it's because I created this in myself. I created this by converting the time of solitude into the character, into the quality that I needed. But that I didn't have before. So, time of solitude should be used to convert. Okay, like this dress I'm wearing now. Where is it from? It's a product of time. If nobody spends time to do it, there will, be, there will be no product. There will be no cloth. It's a product of time. <laughs> this book is a product of time because somebody took time to write it. That's why we have, we have a book. This iPad that is here is a product of time. People took time. Many people, they gave their time to produce it. Everything is a product of, product of time. You too could use your time, get a hold of time to produce anything you want, either in yourself, that's adding value to yourself, or produce another thing in others, giving them, writing books for them, teaching them, producing materials for them, or you could actually produce physical, tangible products, services, through convert time into any product that you wish to have. You convert time into any product that you wish to have. 
So you could use it to get yourself free from anxiety, from fear, from fear, from negative thoughts. Clean your mind from negative things. Another thing that, you could, that solitude will do for you is that it will help you to be dependent on God. Because you are alone, you know, because when you are always surrounded by people, you are always thinking that you need people to survive. And that, you know, without people or without your parents or without your husband or without your wife or without your children, that you cannot, you cannot be yourself, you cannot be happy, you cannot, be, you cannot survive. But when you isolate yourself to be alone with God, to be alone with your vision, to be alone with your project, to be alone, when you are just alone, the time of solitude, you discover that I'm alone here and I'm surviving. I'm alone here and, I'm all, and I have to just depend on God while I'm alone here. So it, sets, it makes you to discover that in life, you, are, you can walk through life all by yourself. That you don't need to be dependent on anything. That you don't need to be addicted to anything. That you don't need to be dependent on people to, be, to become who you. You can become everything you need all by yourself. Just by discovering the one who, who created you from who you came. By if you just discover him, you, it will become your sole source. I mean, it's a great thing to be able to make God your source. And time of solitude provides you that opportunity. Also, the second, the flip part of that is that the time of solitude sets you free. It sets you free and makes you less dependent on people, less dependent on job, less dependent on food, less dependent on things. You can just use solitude time to be a time to, to set yourself free from dependency. Because dependency on people, on things, on stuff is one of the greatest things that could kill you. That could enslave you. Put you in bondage. But that time of solitude, you could actually use it to convert it, to change yourself from that into somebody that is more dependent only on God. But another thing that solitude will give you is that it makes you to be more proficient and efficient. Because when you are in time of solitude, you are not being distracted left and right, telephone calls and all those things. You are focusing. Through solitude, you could focus, concentrate, and be, become more efficient, more effective than when you are just living a regular life. So a solitude time is a time of concentrated result, concentrated action, concentrated result. 